Hey, how you doing out there in YouTube land? This is Stiletto coming at you from the Wild Wild West. Have a package that just came in today. I have a funny feeling I know what it is. It's from SOG. My Pentagons. Remember a while back I told you I was going to send my, my, my SOG Pentagons in for a repair or replacement? Well, I think they're here. They finally came back. It's been a little bit over a month. About a month and a half. But anyway. Oh, doing the opening day is my favorite SOG. My favorite SOG folder, that is. My Vision XR. Alright. Vision XR went to work with me today, too. Absolutely love the Vision XR. It's my most fidgety knife. Yep, it is SOG. Okay. I was worried that they wouldn't re um, engrave the one that I had that was engraved, or laser, whatever you call it. But my YouTube nickname on it, Stiletto. They're both sealed. Last time the one I had that, that was a laser engraved, it wasn't sealed. Like, you know, because they had to open it up to in order to take it out to do that. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe this one was. I see a slice mark on this one. How about this one? And this one's really sealed. So this must be the stiletto one. Let's take a look at that one first. I hope they're not hitting the backspacer. That's what I'm hoping. Oh, yeah. They got it. They got it. I see Stiletto already. They did it right. Yep. That's a clean backspacer. It doesn't have any um, knife chips in it. Or blade chips in it. Definitely a different knife because the um, they call it the thumb studs aren't resting on the um, the liners like they were last time. They have a, a little bit of space, like a millimeter, less than a millimeter's worth of space. All right, I think they got it. Sweet. I love these little knives. Absolutely love it. Take out this piece. This one's going to go in my drawer. That was my original plan for them in the first place. That's going to be one of the knives that I carry. That's the reason why I got two of them. So I really plan on just carrying the Pentagons instead of the XR, but the XR ended up being the one I... Because I only have one X, X, XR. And I had planned on letting this one be the, the safe queen. <laughs> and this is going to be the one that I carry. Well, it works nice, too. Thumb says they're still harder to use, though, than, than the flipper. Okay, any bumps? No bumps. I think they solved the issue. Solved the issue in that one of them so far. Let's check out my other one.
Yep, it's a different knife. Nope. This the, the other one is one that I really had. And it's got space between, it's not resting on the it's not resting on the frame. So maybe that's some, something that you want to look for. If you got one of these and you think it might be bummed, but look to see if the thumb says are resting on the frame. Both of my other ones were the, the thumb says were resting on the frame. And then check to see after you open and close it a few times, see if you got any um marks where the blade was hitting the backstop. I mean the the backspacer. Yep, it's not hitting. Wow, so I must have that's I must the first two I had must have been flukes. Sweet. Sweet. Thank you, Sog. You fixed it. You fixed my issue. This is gonna be the one that goes in my drawer. I think these are some cool looking little knives. So I got the Mikov look. The Czechoslovakian Mikov. Only it made tactical. Stiletto. This will be the one that be in my ADC drawer. Absolutely working perfect now. A little bit stiff on the on the flipper and, and the and the opening and closing action a little bit. But that's just how they are when they're brand new. After you play with them for a little bit, then they loosen really up, loosen up really good. Absolutely love it. Your blade's not hitting. So I wonder if that was just the first run because I got mine when they first came out. They might have corrected that issue. Because I bet you I wasn't the only person that had that issue or, or had that problem. Especially since I had two of them that were doing the same thing. This one opens and closes a little bit easier. But this is going to be the collector. The one without stiletto on it. It'll be the collector. Well, that's all I wanted to do today. I just wanted to do a little quick little, quick little video showing showing the outcome of sending them back to um, Sog for a repair replacement. It did take a while. It did take a while. It took about a month and a half, almost two months, and I did have to call a few times and just make sure that they were on it and stuff like that and. It wasn't like um, cold steel. I don't know, every time I sent something back to cold steel, I, I got I got I got it right back within a week. Cold steel was real fast. That was pre-COVID though. I haven't sent anything back during the COVID, this COVID year or whatever. I haven't had anything to send back to them during this COVID year. But there, during the during the regular times and the regular years when they got their regular staff and everything's working regular, that might be why these took a little bit longer too because of COVID. These went back during. These uh, Pentagons went back during the COVID season, so they may not be—they may not have their full staff, or they might be understaffed, or something like that, or people might be sick. Who knows? So I, I'll give them a break on that one. But it took them—it took them a while though, like a month and a half. That's the longest it ever took for me to get something back from somebody that I had to send back something back to them. I've heard—I've heard you know horror stories about Benchmade though that you know sometimes things take two or three months, but. I don't know. I've never had to send anything back to Benchmade. Everything I've gotten from Benchmade has been perfect. But they definitely fixed the problem. Definitely fixed the problem. So now I can put this one back on the A-list. I could put the I could put the Pentagon back on the A-list with the XR. The XR though is still my favorite. As far as like opening and closing. I don't have any knife that opens and closes easier than this one. <laughs> And you guys know all the different little knives I got, and I've tried out all the different types of access locks or crossbar locks, whatever you want to call them. This is the XR lock, I guess. But this one is the most fun to play with. 
and I've opened and closed it a billion times by now. I don't even know how many times. And I, I haven't had any problems with the, the springs or whatever. I know these have wool springs, so they're a little bit better than the springs that Benchmade uses. I haven't had any problems with my XR. My XR Vision. I absolutely love the XR Vision. It's an awesome knife. I just got done eating, and I, I, had, I had nothing fancy, just some cheese and crackers and... Um, some bratwurst I sliced up. And I sliced it all, everything up with this knife. I just got done cleaning it off. It's a great little slicer. I mean, it's, it's, it's great for everything, you know, for food prep or whatever. It's an awesome little knife. Can't say, can't say enough good things about this one. I love this one. I think this is my favorite out of the line still. I don't know, you know, I got to give the Pentagon a chance. Because the Pentagon never really got a... Got a Got, got a chance to have a spend a lot of time with me because I was having issues with it hitting the backspacer. And I was trying to figure out what should I do with it, send it back or try to fix it myself or whatever. And ultimately, I, I, ultimately I decided not to take it apart or anything, just send it back. Because it was hitting the backspacer hard. And it was putting like a big, deep groove, groove in the backspacer. And, and besides just putting a, a groove in the backspacer, it, it would dull the blade. So it, that wasn't working for me. So I decided just to send them back. Absolutely love the Pentagon. The Pentagon is the reason why I got any SOGS. Because I saw this one online. Because at first I was going to get the other one that had the same shape. I forget what that one was called. And it had a little bit different type of lock. <clears throat> it was still like an access style lock. But it was a different type of lock. I forget what it was called. But I was going to get that one first. And then I saw a video on it where somebody was was showing it and they were doing this and the, the, the handle was just flexing all over the place and I saw another video where Cold Steel did a demonstration where uh, I mean they did a strength test against another knife a Cold Steel knife and that knife just fell apart I mean it was like weak as hell I mean the, the handle and everything just fell all apart and I said no I don't want that and then like within the next couple of days I was looking and Looking at different SOGs, because I was determined to find a SOG to try out. And I saw this one. I said, whoa, now that is cool as hell. I got to have that. And that's the reason why I got it. Oh, this one's working nice. It's going to be like, I think it's going to be like the the XR. I mean, the, the Vision. On the other one that I had, it was almost impossible to use the thumb studs on it. Because the thumb studs were sitting so close to the to the frame, to the stainless steel liners, or the or the embedded stainless steel liners, the, the G10 frame, handle scales, that it was like hard to get a get get in there and get a bite on it with your thumb. Yeah, but it's not hitting. It's not hitting at all. Okay. Well, that's about it for today, people. A little quickie. I should have a couple more fixed blades coming. An AK-47. And I forget what the other one was I have coming. But I know I have the AK-47 coming. I wanted to try that one out. The bare metal one, the one that's made in Italy. With the, I think it's a five and a half inch blade or something like that. And I want to try that one out. It's either five and a half inch or six inch, one or the other. I want to try that one out. Oh, I have an SRK coming. An SRK, Sam May, that's coming from Knight's Knives. And I don't know why I didn't get the SRK before. But Knight's Knives had one on it, had a great deal on one. And it's a Sam May. And, you know, just to add to my Sam May collection. And that's going to be the last one I get for my Sam May collection. I think the reason why I didn't get the SRK before because I just didn't, I was looking for Tontos and stuff when I was trying to do my Sam May collection. I wasn't really, I knew about the Taipan, I knew I wanted the Taipan, I knew I wanted the Recon. But for some reason, I, I didn't see the, the, the I, I forgot about the SRK. And the SRK is another awesome knife, it's survival rescue knife. And it fits in the category of knives I like. 
I'm not too big on the hunting knives. I have a couple of hunting knives, but mine are basically like users. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not big on, big on collecting hunting knives. And most of my hunting knives are like small because they're, they're made for skinning animals and things like that. You don't want no big old giant bulky thing, like a bowie knife or something. I tend to like the fighters and survival knives and things like that. And for my pocket knives, I like urban, urban fighters and urban survivors. <laughs> Things that you can carry around in public and in your pocket without people freaking out because you got it in your pocket. That's one reason why I don't have a whole lot of fixed blades because the only way I can carry fixed blades in my area is if, I, if, I, if they're exposed. And I don't like people knowing that I have a, a knife or a tool or a weapon, whatever you want to call it. I don't want no, I don't want, I want the, if, if I'm coming across somebody that's bad or evil and they see that, that gives them a chance to figure out how they want to attack me. I'd rather have them not know what I have. And then when they go to attack me, I surprise them. That's the way I sort of think. I think it's better for people not to know, what, no, not to know your abilities, not to know that you have a black belt in martial arts, Kenpo or, or Tong Sudo or Taekwondo or, <clears throat> or whatever. Or, or be a boxer or, or, you know, mixed martial artist or whatever. It's better not to advertise that. And then when somebody comes up, comes up on you and wants to take advantage of you, you know, because they think that you might be weak or gullible or whatever, you, sh you surprise the crap out of them. I hope that hopefully there's other people around so they can see you whoop their ass. That's the way, excuse my French, whoop their butt. <laughs> So they get, so, so it lets everybody else know not to mess with you too. But uh, that's the way I sort of think about that kind of stuff. I don't like people to know. I'm I'm not the kind of guy that's gonna carry around an AR-15 on my back. I'm not gonna do that in public. I wouldn't do that. What's the purpose of that? Trying to intimidate people? I don't, I don't I don't think like that. I'm not trying to intimidate anybody. I want everybody to live their own lives and do their own thing and be free and happy and and uh, be able to do whatever they want to do in life. Explore their own goals and wishes and dreams and just as long as they're not har harming or hurting other people, it's cool with me. I'm not going to try to pose my thoughts and views on everybody else. But that's the way I think. And by the same token, I don't, I don't want people to be intimidated by my presence. So I'm not going to carry weapons out in the open and, and all that kind of stuff because I'm not trying to intimidate people. I want to get along with people, not, not intimidate them. But anyway, that's just the way I think. That's the reason why I mainly like pocket knives. And the, the fixed blades I have are ones I either collect, they're just for collection, or like my Bowies, they were for like, um, you know, when you dress up in Western garb or whatever for Western events or whatever. I, I, I didn't carry, I, don't, I didn't get those to go out and fight people with or whatever. It was just part of a costume, really. And, uh, for a fast draw. And, and my fixed blades that aren't for collections, like, I, I have knives I have for home defense. That's the reason why I like my, uh, my big long tontos. <laughs> Those are mainly home defense weapons and stuff like that. Like the ones that you saw, the first ones I showed you, were the budget ones, and those are the ones I used to carry, but I didn't carry those out in the open either. I carried them in my boot. Boot knives, like they were the five and a half inch bladed ones, the Cobuns or whatever. I used to carry those. And the Peacekeeper, two I used to carry until I found out I wasn't supposed to carry it. It was illegal to carry it, and I stopped carrying it. But I didn't carry it out in the open, I carried it concealed. And what else? In my Nightfall series knives, those are for not only collecting, but for also home for home defense. Or if if a, if a civil war or anything breaks out and I need I need to protect myself and my family, I'll carry those. That then I'll carry them out in the open because it won't matter. It'd just be like you know, it'd be on like Donkey Kong. But uh, but for my everyday carry and. The civilian world and in a peaceful society or semi-peaceful society, whatever you want to call our society right now, I like pocket knives. 
And pocket knives I like are the ones that I can open and close with one hand. And preferably with both hands. That's the only thing I don't like about the Clever Girl is that it's a right-handed knife. Same thing with my tie light. I wish it was, I wish those two knives, they're two of my favorite knives, but they're both right-hand knives. I wish, I wish they would make them in, for lefties or whatever, but but that's the only that's the only thing I don't like about the Clever Girls that it's hard to, it's hard for me to manipulate with my left hand. And it's one thing I really do like about the crossbar locks is that they're truly ambidextrous. They're easy to use with either hand, whether you're right-handed or left-handed. They're still easy to use, especially the ones like this with the flippers. I absolutely love flippers. Flippers with a crossbar lock rocks. They rock. You know, don't worry about the Omega Springs or the the Wolf Springs breaking or whatever, because they're cheap. They're cheap to replace. I just bought a package of them for like, I think I got like eight replacement, eight pairs of of uh, Omega Springs, because you know I decided I'm gonna carry my 391BK. I don't care if I break springs every other day. I'm gonna replace it because I just love that knife. But uh, I bought a set of eight replacement springs off of eBay, and I think they were like 15 bucks. And I'm never going to be able to use that. I, I, the only the only time I've ever broken an Omega spring was on my 391BK. And that's after three months of just constantly fidgeting with it. Because I just love the knife. Because I'm a stiletto person. And that's like the first stiletto I've had. That's a manual folder. That is okay to open and close all the time. Because like the old Italian ones, if you did that with them, you'd wear out the back spring. And the back spring would start to bend or whatever. And then the, the, light, the knife would have a whole lot of slop in it. And... After, after a while, it becomes non-functional. I mean, not safe to use. And so, you can't really, you can't really do that with the old stilettos. And then, like, with the tie lights, if you, if you play with them too much also, the, 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 uh, what do you call it, the leaf spring, where it touches against the, the blade tang, it'll start to wear down a little bit too. And then you'll start to get a little bit of up and down play. So, I don't like to play with those too much either. The liner locks. That's that's just natural for liner locks and uh, frame locks. They, they have that issue. But with the but with these though, with the crossbar lock, you can play with them all day long and they never get loose. They just stay the same. I think it's an awesome lock. That's the reason why I like cross. That's the reason why I like the crossbar style locks so much. You know, sure the weak the weak spot of them is the is the Omega Spring or the Wolf Spring. That's the weak that's the weak link for the for these kind of locks. But you know what? They're easy to replace. It's not that big of a deal. You know, don't 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 let something like that keep you from getting one. If you want a knife that's easy to manipulate, these are easier to manipulate than a switchblade. I think it's easier to manipulate than a well maybe now that more than a, a OTF that goes in and out. Or out and in, whatever you want to call it. But what other what other knife can you open and close this fast? The OTF? Not any side opening knives. There's not any side opening knives you could open open and close this fast. And that's the reason why I like the crossbar lock, or the axis lock, or the XR lock, or the able lock, or whatever they whatever the, the manufacturer's calling them that makes them. That's making them nowadays. It's my fa It's one of my favorite kind of locks, all time locks for a pocket knife. Because I like to fidget. I like to play with my pocket knives. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. I like to play with them. They're fun. If you're a knife, if you're a knife nut like me, you like you like playing with your knives, and it's just part of it. And every once in a while, you get cut. You know, because you know you play with a knife long enough, you're gonna get cut eventually. Just like if you ride a motorcycle long enough, you're gonna wreck eventually. You're gonna you're gonna feel the pit asphalt eventually. Just part of this part of the it's part of the lifestyle. Now I've been cut a million times, but you know what? With these kind of blades that are real sharp, the cuts heal real quick because they're real fine cuts, and you don't hardly leave leave, leave any scars. Like I don't know if you can see that. This is a cut. I got stabbed right there. Stabbed myself with a with a um. Cold Steel uh, XL Tonto, my Cold Steel XL Tonto, the Oz, the Oz 10 one I have. I was flipping it around and playing with it, and I, I don't know why I did. I just wasn't paying attention. Bam! 
and it was gushing. <laughs> Took a long time to heal. <laughs> and I, I cut myself across my fingers with um, with my um, Benchmade AFCK 800 with the uh, titanium liners. And it had a, what kind of, what kind of steel? I think it was a 154 cm or something like that. Stainless steel blade. And it cut me across the fingers when the when the liner lock failed on me. And that's when, that's when I stopped liking liner locks. That was a real bad cut, too. But, you know, whenever you're going to manipulate stuff, and I don't have any trainer knives. I always practice and train with live blades. I'm not telling you to do that. But that's, I just always do it all. You know, I've always used live blades. It's probably, you know, a lot smarter to use a, a, a trainer. I just never buy any trainers. It's just like when I practice manipulating knives and stuff, I always use live blades. I don't know why. But I've gotten a cut a few times like that, but not really bad. You know, I got stabbed in a fight one time. But anyway, I love these knives. I love the Pentagons. I'm, I'm back in love with the Pentagon. It was, I took it off. I took it off my love, my love scale or my uh, my line of lives I love, but now I'm back in love with it. I absolutely love it. I love the way it looks like a little dagger. It's not quite a stiletto blade because it's not narrow, but it's more like a boot knife blade or like a, a like a Czechoslovakian Mikov. About the same size, exact same size as a Czechoslovakian Mikov. The kind of knife their Secret Service used to use and carry. And it was issued to them. It's absolutely knife, beautiful knife. That's why I always thought about the 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 smaller, um, not the smallest, but the medium. I guess the medium size. I can't remember what number it is. But the, the Counterpoint, not the Counterpoint XL, but the one smaller than the Counterpoint XL. With the four inch plate, I've always thought that was like a Mikoff too. Absolutely love it. All right, I'm just rambling. Hope everybody's doing okay out there. Coronavirus is spiking everywhere. But supposedly we're gonna have a vaccine pretty soon, so I hope that's gonna change, put everything back to, you know, get start getting things back to normal again. I'm tired of wearing masks and doing all those kind of things and stuff like that. But the job I have requires me to wear a mask. And so I, I do what I have to do, you know, so I can earn my money. So I can buy some blades to show y'all. <laughs> but anyway, peace out. Stiletto. Hope everybody's doing good. Stay safe.